I love my ice cream, but I cut. I tried to cut that out. I said only if we win a test match, I'm gonna eat ice cream. I did that. <laughs> Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another edition of On the Line. I'm Alex Jordan. Today's guest is an interesting one. He is a wicketkeeper batsman for the West Indies side and a young Trinidadian who has really captured the imagination of our region already. Ladies and gentlemen, Joshua De Silva is on the line. Joshua, welcome. Thank you, thank you for having me, it's a pleasure. It's really good to have you, in fact. Um, I can see that you have on a hat there already. It looks like a J, but it's actually, show, show the public, please. Trinidad and Tobago. Ah, sweet TNT, fantastic. Um, Joshua, I don't even know where to start in our talk because there's so much I want to talk to you about, but. You know, I, I don't know how much you know about me, but I, I get very real all the time. So I have to start in a real manner. From yeah. the time my mother and I saw this white boy on the West Indies side, we know he good. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be good. Tell us how you make that side. Some some hard work in, over the years. Uh, made it up my way through the ranks through club cricket in Trinidad, the first class cricket for Trinidad, and then um, got that opportunity with emerging players and then had a good season in 2020, the beginning of 2020 in the first class season and made my way to England with the with the test team as a reserve, got an opportunity to wicket keep there and then we went to New Zealand and made my test debut. Well, yeah, you make it sound simple, but it really wasn't that simple. No, it wasn't. And I love the fact that you also uh, went on a Kyron Pollard scholarship to play I county did. cricket in England, right? You're benefiting from the wealth uh, of cricketers who've come before you in your country. Yeah, um, I was lucky enough to go with, through Queen's Park and Kyron Pollard. Um, they sent two boys, myself and another boy, to England. And I played in, sorry, Division, Division 3 with all Wimbledon Dominions. And that that series, that um, that tournament or season, to say, was something that probably shaped me into who I am today on and off the field because I had to do everything for myself. I'm a bit of a mummy's boy, so to have to learn to cook, do my own laundry, um, I was working as well. I had to travel to work and do everything. And that just all of that trans transferred into the field because I had to carry the, the batting, if to say so, um, for the team as well. I scored a good bit of runs and um, I helped us a little bit come fourth or fifth in the league. But yeah, that experience was something that I'll never forget and helped me a lot. You are in the business of scoring runs. Just to let the West Indians know right now, you're... Um... You already scored the first half century on test debut by a West Indian in five years. So that's a massive accomplishment in itself. Um, you, you were also a Trinidad Tobago under 19 footballer, a baller. I played, I didn't play for Trinidad, I played for my school in, in Tacol, um, which is our like the highest level of school football in Trinidad. Yeah, I, I always thought I would be a footballer, but when, when the time came to, to choose, I ended up choosing cricket. So you still think you, you, you have mad skills in football? Or? I'm the best. I'm the best on the team. Nobody likes to admit it, but they all know I'm the <laughs> Okay, fair enough. All right, let's talk cricket. Um, I'm, I'm so impressed by your performance, not only in New Zealand, obviously now with Bang um, Bangladesh. Uh, congratulations on, on the series sweep. What a, a wonderful moment for us as West Indian cricket fans. One of the things that Phil Simmons says he was most proud about was the partnerships and, and how important building partnerships is. And you really were responsible for a lot of the great partnerships that we had in those innings. Um, and we're just going to reel them off here. You added 99 for this a six wicket partnership with Blackwood in the first test in, in Chattagram. You added 100 with Carl Mears for the six wicket. You top scored with 92 in the first innings in Dhaka, which was a 88 run six wicket partnership with Nkrumah Bonner. So it seems like anybody comes to the wicket and, and you can score runs with them. 118 seventh run, uh, seventh wicket stand. Uh, with Alzari Joseph. What's your secret to that success, your ability to build, build partnerships? Well, the first one, I'll have to thank um, Jermaine a lot for that one. He, he talked me through, there was a few times that, that I looked like I wanted to get myself out, but he just told me, look, Josh, you're the last batsman. We need, we need this partnership to take us over the line or take us as far as we can into the, into the game and try and make something of the game. But no, it's just, it, it can't happen without a partner and, and Bonner, especially, he was going really well. Um, so we kind of feed off of each other's energy. And once both he, we came out one of the days and Bonner was just down and he, he was like, he was walking through the emotion. I was like, yo, you need to be happy. He's like, yeah, I need to get any, I need to get any mood. So I just, we just started cracking jokes and we just enjoy what we're doing. We love doing it. 
And then the, the last one with Alzari, he, I was a bit of a, a bystander there. He was just going berserk and I was enjoying watching it with him. And he, yeah, he was just doing anything. I scored like 30 runs or 40 runs from that partnership. But yeah, he, he took control, but we had a good partnership. Yeah, each of those stories you just told us involved like some emotional connection, some friendship, some, you know, some kind of vibes between the players, which I feel is so crucial in sport and particularly in cricket uh, where, where you're playing with another player. How have you managed to forge these relationships? Because you are, you're a relative newcomer. And as I say, a white boy from Trinidad, I just don't know how you manage it to bond so tightly with the team so quickly. No, I'm always somebody who I like to think that I get along with everybody well. Um, so I like to, to merge. I don't care away from who you are. I'm, I want to merge with you. I want to align with you. I want to do whatever it is. Um, go in the team room. We do something. So I'm good with everyone. So, But for us to do well on the field, we have to be good off the field. So you have to work with that connection, as you said, and it, it really helps. And yeah, just being good with everybody and knowing each other, it helps you improve in your game on the field. You say you're a mama's boy, <laughs> which made me laugh. So um, clearly she's done a pretty good job with her boy. Can you tell us a bit about your family, your upbringing, uh, your life before before we knew you? Um, I grew up in Digamata in Trinidad uh, with my parents, uh, my sister. Uh, my brother was, he was, is a bit older. Um, he was in Canada for a while, but he's back at home now. He's actually living in Tobago. Um, but yeah, I grew up with my parents and they've been, always been supportive of me, no matter what I wanted to do. I was never the best in school. Um, as much as they tried to force me, they didn't force me. They never forced me to do my school, but they always encouraged me to to want to do better for myself. So I don't have any regrets later in life. Um, but I didn't do as well as I hoped I would do. Um, I probably didn't put any work as, as I did on the cricket field or the football pitch. But no, they always encouraged me. Whatever I wanted to do, they always supported me, my sister and my brother as well. So yeah, just grateful for all of my family, even my girlfriend's family and her as well. They support me the same way as my parents would. So all of my family, I'm grateful for them. So you have a pretty strong connection, um, your family, your girlfriend, your girlfriend's family. That will, obviously those things are so important in creating a well-rounded person. Are you surprised by how much more you need to be a professional cricketer than just the cricket? Oh, yeah. If, if it was just cricket and if you didn't have that support system, I'm extremely grateful to have that support system. Um, I'm not sure how long I'd have in the game because there's sometimes cricket just takes you and you think that there's no way to go back and you're not scoring runs and you're thinking about everything else except the cricket. But sometimes you need them to take your mind off of it. And then also you need them to just reassure you, look, you've made it so far. Um, you didn't do it by chance. Look, it, it's going to happen. You just need to take time and maybe just come back down to a level to make it back up to that level. And yeah, that support is definitely um, what has helped, helped me a lot. Keep you grounded and, and keep you humble. Well, I'm exactly. sure in this short time, because you debuted just now, end of last year, you were very well known. Um, in fact, I called in a radio program the other day in Barbados just to talk about the tennis, the Australia Open, and then we go on to the cricket. And we were talking about the fact that there were no fans in the stands. And um, so the guy on the radio program was saying, yeah, but you know what? I kind of like that because you can really focus on the cricket. And I said, yeah, I love how you can hear everything through the stump mic. And then he goes, speaking of the stump mic, you hear my boy Joshua De Silva? <laughs> Joshua De Silva, don't quiet behind his thumbs. Talk to me about that, Joshua. Is it always something you've done? And where does it come from? Um, growing up, you're always told that the wiki keeper has to have the biggest mouth. So probably, yeah, just something I've grown up doing. Um, probably didn't do it as much as I did in that game. I was really trying to motivate you guys to, to just get that, get something special out of them so we can get that victory. Um, but no, the wiki keeper always has to be very vocal. Um, just maybe just cheer up a few words to the batsman, but um, never probably something, I wouldn't say any, anything bad. Maybe just tell them, look, it, it's probably time to time to get out or time to, it doesn't make sense save any test match on the fourth day or something like that. So <laughs> that the, the, the support is, is something that is needed for the guys. And they always tell me um, that I need to be supporting all the time. So I guess I'm just doing my job. Quick break here on the line, the Dome of a Muscle. After the break, we find out which cricketers Joshua really admires. I love my ice cream, but I cut. I tried to cut that out. I said only if we win a test match, I'm gonna eat ice cream. I did that. <laughs> Hi there, welcome back to On the Line. Next up, we find out who keeps Joshua steady and grounded for his cricket. Yeah, 
Yeah, well, listen, another uh, with the keeper Basman who's making some waves from your country, one Nicholas Puran. I don't know if you had a chance to watch him at the Abu Dhabi T10, but uh, how much does he inspire you? How well do you know him? Uh, what do you make of, of, of his shot making? Who um, he plays for the same club that I did. He came in um, when I made my my debut for the first team in Queens Park. He actually played that game, and I was keeping, and he was fielding slip. Um, but yeah, he, he's he's given me a lot of advice. He's helped me a lot. Him, um, Ram Dennis also. He's helped me a bit. Um, but yeah, Puran, uh, a different breed. I, I don't have words to explain. I don't know how he does it. Um, probably need to have a few more discussions with him. But uh, I don't think there's anybody like him in the world right now. Yeah, he's so fantastic to watch. But in fact, you know, you you got to give kudos to the Twin Island Republic who are producing so many world-class cricketers. Obviously, the home of one Brian Charles Lara, but, you know, the Pollards, the Bravos, um, you know, Emmerich, the Ganga, we go right back. Trinidadians right through. And yeah. right now, the current crop are so powerful. Uh, what's it like being around them? Uh, who do you look up to? Maybe who do you have the closest relationship with? How well do you know KP, the big man? Um, yeah, well, we play, obviously play for the same club, Queen's Park. So um, having all those grits, it's just, it's a legacy that you want to live and what you want to be a part of. You want people to talk to you, like how, talk about you, like how they talk about Brian Lara and Pollard and Sunil Narayan, all of them. You just, you want, you want to be part of that legacy. So it's definitely an inspiration to, to be a part of, and hopefully I can one day be just as big as they are. Um, and Pollard. Um, very, very big fan of him, and I, I guess he, he's given me a bit of advice. He's take, set me on that scholarship. Um, so it, it's definitely good to have him in your corner and to get advice from. But, yeah, his leadership skills, his hitting ability. I want to be able to hit the ball like him. I need to get that T20 game going. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, no, we love you in the test spot right now. Thank you very much. But, yes, Karen Pollard is, is miss a ball, and it goes for six. Um, he's unbelievable. And of course, he's so intimidating. You know, yeah. a lot of people will see him in the field and be, and be fearful. Uh, is that the personality that comes through to you? Um, not off the field, definitely on the field. We were just playing a practice match before I left for Bangladesh and I was batting there and he was, he was giving me talk. I was like, geez, Polly, calm down a little bit. But uh, he's just, he's training the youngsters to, that's really going to get at the, the top level. So I guess he's just training us from from at those times when there's no pressure on you because you're going to get when there is pressure. So he's looking after the next generation. He's definitely doing doing what he needs to make Trinidadian cricketers and West Indies by extension as good as they can. Let's get into the realness now. Everybody sees um, all the glitter and the glow and the gold. Um, is it glitter and the gold and them think a bag of rose, but <laughs> who gives it no rose? You have been going from bubble to bubble. I say this because right now you can see I'm in a, a hotel room and you know, quarantine to quarantine to quarantine is very challenging for me. And I don't have to get out in front of people that are perform at that level. Um, tell me a bit about what you've been doing, how you've been managing. I know you just arrived in Antigua when, when yeah. we're catching up with you. It might not look difficult, but it's extremely difficult. You would know what it's like to be in a bubble you, in Abu Dhabi. Now you're in quarantine, but uh, I can't even begin to explain the, the toughness it is and what the toll it takes on your mind itself. I'm actually quite happy here. There's palm trees, there's white sand and blue, blue sea. So it's, it's a lot easier here. But um, in Bangladesh, those first, those first few days were, were terrible. And especially coming back home from New Zealand, those seven days in quarantine, I got out Christmas Day and it was, I thought those seven days would never end. Um, so... The walls just felt like they were just going, coming in closer and closer. But it's it's what we have to do to be able to do what we love. It's our job. It's not a job for me because I love doing it. Um, I haven't worked a day in my life as yet, so um, I'm gonna do it as much as as long as I can. Um, I hopefully it doesn't take too much of a toll where I have to take a break. But uh, right now I'm enjoying it, and it just a few days to to get over it, and then I get to be outside a little bit. Yeah, that's such an interesting point you make about feeling the walls come in on you. You're like, if you don't keep your mind right, you can feel like you're going a bit nuts, right? Yeah. Let's talk a bit about that mental health because it's obviously a huge topic around the world. Eh? Um, Prince Harry and Williams started talking about this a, a couple of years back. And um, of course, in sports, it's a major discussion. You know, for so long as, as a humanity, or certainly in our generation, we look a lot at physical health and we don't talk too much about mental health. Is it something that you work on? Is it something that, that you, you place a lot of importance on? 
Um, definitely my mom puts more of the, those stuff on me. She sends me stuff. She tells me to look at these videos and just, just work on your mental health. It's definitely a very important thing. Um, you have to have that, that mindset to go out there and be able to perform. If you're not in the right frame of mind, you're going to go out there and think about everything else other than the job at hand. So you really need to be mentally strong, physically strong, of course, but mentally, I would say is much more important. This game is 90% mental. I would think any game is 90% mental. Because yeah. in order to perform, you, you need to be in that right mindset, as I said. So, um, yeah, definitely, I do my mental training. We have a, a mental, what, what, I can't remember the word they use. They use a mental sports coach or something like that. We have Donald from Trinidad. He's with us. He was with us in Bangladesh. I have a good bit of conversations with him. Um, just, it's, it's nothing, you don't, you might not need any help, but just have a conversation and just reassure yourself that, look, you're in the right frame of mind and I've the first conversation I had with him was in England and I've seen so much more progress from what I've done with that my mom sent me and even from just talking to him so it's very very important and I don't know if you know this concept of the secret where you, you are what you think essentially yeah. you know if, if you're playing golf and you get you get on a tee you don't look at the water you don't look at the sand right you look at where you want it to go uh, how yeah. much work do you do with that in your batting I find sometimes I watch batsmen and they look like they take them and they help I'm not going to lie. I think about it as well, but it's, it's how well you can block it out. Um, before I go into bat, I think, what if I get one ball today, boy? But the first, my first 10 balls in, in, in any cricket game is just to get off the mark. I need to get off the mark just, just not to be on zero. You don't want to see that of walking off the field. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not supposed to be thinking of that, but um, it's just how well you can adjust and how well you can block it out. It's, it's always going to be there. That's one thing that Donald has told me, the mental health coach. He has told me it's always going to be there, but it's how well you can think of the job at hand. So there's something that I did while I was batting. I used to think about how am I going how's like how am I going to get out this ball? But then I just started when I was batting. I just started thinking, play late, play late, play late. So I'm thinking on of playing the ball late instead of thinking of how I got out. So that's something that somebody, if they're thinking of those things, just maybe just whisper something. I talk it out. I actually say play late, play late in Bangladesh. It was stay tight and play late, stay tight and play late. So it's just something that I do to keep my mind just thinking on that job at hand, at the ball. And then as the ball is finished, I walk off and I think about anything else but cricket or but anything but cricket, the ball, anything. I think about why I think my parents do at home, what my dog is eating. Anything but cricket. But once that ball is there, I'm thinking of the ball. That's so interesting. That is fascinating. Think about what you want to do. Think about what you want to do, not about what you don't want to do. Time for a quick break here on On The Line. But uh, don't move, because when we get back, we hear how Joshua is managing bubble life and hear about some of his real weaknesses. I love my ice cream. But I cut. I tried to cut that out. I said only if we win a test match, I'm gonna eat ice cream. I did that. <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching on the line, and we're chatting with Joshua De Silva. All right, let's get to know a bit more about Joshua De Silva. Your likes, your dislikes. What kind of music you into? Are you a, a video game man? Like, how are you passing the time? Let's say in, in quarantine. Um. How am I passing the time? Right now, I haven't took out my PS4. I took it to, to Bangladesh and I have not taken it out my bag as yet since I haven't even played it in Bangladesh. I'm just fed up of playing video games. I've been doing it so much and I just, <laughs> I can't even just do it anymore. So I watch a lot of Netflix. Um, I talk to the family, talk to the girlfriend. Um, that's basically how I pass the time. There's really nothing else to do. Um, except look out the window and look at the ceiling otherwise. But yeah, that's that's just how I'm passing. And music, I'm a big soca fan. Not the biggest music person. You're not going to catch me listening to music all the time. But number one would be soca. And then we'll come down to dance all the reggae. But I listen to mostly everything. It depends on, on what the mood is of the day. But um, yeah, soca, Marshall Montano. Can't get better than that. <laughs> no, double M. Absolutely not. Um, let's talk a bit about your fitness. I mean, obviously you're in the room now, but... When you get out, I'm assuming you have some kind of team in terms of your fitness. And it was very easy to see that you you dropped a lot of weight and, and leaned out in, in the months leading up to your to your debut. How did you do that? 
Um, a lot of work from from Ronald, the strength and conditioning coach. He probably he will. Big up like, Ronald. Right yeah, he'd like me to say that I'm still not as disciplined as I should be with my eating, um, which is true. <laughs> it's quite what hard. I like. What do you eat by Joshua? Um, I love my ice cream, but I cut. I try to cut that out. I said only if we win a test match, I'm gonna eat ice cream. I did that. <laughs> After the first test, I ate my ice cream, but after the second one, I was like, all right, Ronald, I wouldn't eat one just for you. Um, but yeah, I just love food. I love all kinds of food. Um, so probably not the best thing, but I try and work it off um, when I'm doing my training. But yeah, big, big, big thank you to Ronald helping me. I um, still have a very long way to go. Um, I need to be a bit more disciplined to drop off a few few more pounds to be able to, to play those test matches. But I'm doing all right so far. But yeah, a lot of work to be done. Me and you both, brother. Me and you both. <laughs> the thing is that someone very wise told me once, no amount of exercise can get rid of a bad diet. No. So like, it's all them calories, Dread. Ice cream yeah. has to go. Yeah. It, it's going, it's gone, it's gone. It's not coming back. Uh, can you cook? <laughs> because I know you come from a country where food is a real thing. Yeah, I, I try my hand sometimes. I could make my curry. I could, um, I like to grill. Um, the easy stuff, boil some rice and maybe some cook some eggs but mommy and daddy do all the cooking <laughs> oh good now i'm sure we're gonna fix that all right well um, last couple of questions i guess i wonder who you were looking at when you were growing up did you idolize anybody it doesn't have to be a cricketer it doesn't have to be an athlete did you any anybody's your real inspiration um growing up uh, there's francesco totti um very big fan of francesco totti italy was my my team growing up, they still are my team, but Francesco Totti, the kind of player he was, what he did for Italy and what he did for the footballing world. Um, him and Andrea Pirlo, just great footballers. Um, cricket, growing up, I used to idolize Ramnir Sawan. So my dad, oh, my. Yeah, my, my dad bought me a helmet for my birthday. I was very young and I used to pawn the bandana and wear the helmet in the house and he would throw a softball at me and I'll have my plastic bat and I'm batting there with my bandana in the house, breaking a few windows. Um, that mommy wasn't too impressed with, but um, yeah, those 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 guys were a big inspiration to me. And now I look at Steve Smith, and there's Brad Haddon, who I looked at uh, before he retired. Probably kind of try and do what he does um, with his keeping a very good keeper, and he could have batted as well. Yeah, interesting. Okay, you called two names there that I have experience with. Ram Naresh Sarwan was actually on the line last season, and mm -hmm. it was a really good interview. And I also remember his debut. At Kensington Oval, I was with my mother and father, and he was so stylish. And I remember my dad saying, "Reminds me a bit of me," because <laughs> my father considered himself a good batsman. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, his career should have been longer. But, um, I, I, we discussed that on the first season. And Steve Smith, you know, Steve Smith was at the CPL, and we were on the same leg of the tour. Just as after it all went down with, def um, I was going to say deflate it, but uh, it's not that. It's sandpaper game. Mm. and um he was obviously recovering emotionally physically yeah. he had some form still but when i tell you joshua he was in the gym every day his disciplines are real yeah what he does he he's next to next to nobody in the world of how hard he works i would guess he he i saw in an interview he said that he he forgets how he holds the bat so in order for him to find out how he needs to how he holds the bat again he can either be one ball it could be a thousand balls but he's not leaving the net until he remembers how he holds the bat but the, the work ethic he puts in and just he's di he's different to put it that way but he makes it work for him so I, it admires me and it's a big inspiration for me to just be myself and do what i need to do to perform you play any golf joshua I, I try my best. You can ask Shamar Brooks how good I am, but he probably wouldn't big me up too much. But Shamar is a great golfer. Very good. I, I, I've beaten him on a hole once. I got a par, a par and he got a bogey or something like that. That's that <laughs> the only time. Okay, I'm sure there'll be plenty of time for that. Any recommendations on Netflix for me and the rest of the region? Um, right What's now, there? I'm watching Blacklist. Um, there was Suits. Suits is very good. Probably one of the best shows I've ever watched. Okay, um, good. And The Hundred. Very good show. And Arrow, another very good one. Wonderful. Well, Joshua, that is so nice getting to know you. Thank you for being on the line. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much to Joshua De Silva for joining us on the line. Great to catch up with him. Make sure you join me next week, same time, same place, where we talk to track star from Barbados, Akila Jones. Thank you so much for all your encouragement and support in season one. And here we are, uh, a new year 
same pandemic, same quarantine. I'm in a hotel room and I'm going to be catching up with lots of stars 